Hey, I want to welcome everybody back to another episode of our Knowledge Basics. My name is Bruce, and I'm grateful that you're spending a little bit of time with us to learn how to do different types of connections and things here in the AV integration world. Today, we're going to be talking NL2 connectors. NL2 connectors, but also NL4 and NL8 and TrueCon and PowerCon and how are all these things similar but yet slightly different? I'm not gonna go into every detail, but in my hand, I actually have an NL4 connector, which is gonna be the one we're gonna be focused on. Um, but an NL4 has four conductors, NL2 has two conductors, NL8, guess what? Has eight conductors. We're only gonna be using two conductor wire, so technically we're gonna be using it as a NL2 connector, but then we're gonna show you how it applies to everything else. So we're gonna jump right in. Today, with our tools, it's really simple. Uh, we only need some wire strippers. We're gonna need probably a Phillips head screwdriver, probably a flathead screwdriver. This is an either or. If you have an 11 in one, it's a great way to go. 11 little pieces into one screwdriver is what that means. We always have our uh, heat gun on standby because we're professionals and we heat shrink everything, including our labels to make sure that that's gonna be great. So I got my heat uh, gun over here. And now we can just go over kind of the pieces and parts that we've got here. So like I said, we are gonna be looking at an NL2 connector. This one's an NL4. The difference is, is two conductors versus four conductors. So to begin with, uh, I've taken my connector out of the package. And one of the things you're gonna find right away is this one comes with two different types of strain reliefs. And basically the two different strain reliefs are for the different diameters of cable that you might be messing with. If you're doing an actual NL4, it's gonna be a bigger cable. And if I, if I show you this, I'm gonna do this close up to the camera. If I squeeze that like it's going into the connector, you can see the diameter there, and that's actually for a little bit larger cable. And if I do the same thing with the other one, I squeeze this one and I go down, you can see how that's a much smaller uh, diameter, and that's for a smaller cable. So today, since we're gonna be doing NL2 with only two conductors, I'm gonna use the smaller strain relief, which means I can just kind of toss that one to the side. I'm not gonna need it today. All right, now we're gonna throw our clear heat shrink on first and we're gonna put it back there. We always use heat shrink because we're professionals and we're gonna make sure that our cables look good and our labels last forever. Uh, well, you know, close to forever, as long as we can. And, uh, and then we're gonna strip our wire. So I've got my wire strippers here. We talk a lot about stripping wire. It's the first step of terminating pretty much any cable. But the, the goal is we're just gonna score that outer jacket. We're not cutting too deep because we don't wanna hurt the inner lead. We're just gonna score it. And then we're gonna pop that little piece off over there. I've got this piece of Kevlar in here. I'm gonna cut that Kevlar off. And I kind of felt like I made that maybe a little bit too long. It's not a huge deal. I can just uh, cut that to the length that I think that I want. Um, so I like that a little bit better. And then I'm gonna take my other piece of heat shrink and I'm gonna slide that on over this uh, jacket connection right here. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I wanna make sure that this looks good and looks professional and presentable uh, when we actually have it out in the field. So I'm gonna heat shrink that little black jacket down. Perfect. And now I'm going to strip these two wires, okay? Now, when stripping these wires, uh, you wanna do, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch. Um, and, you know, I'm not the type of guy that's gonna pull out a ruler and make sure that it's perfect. Flashback. Yeah, I think a quarter of an inch is the right. This is actually a little bit longer than a quarter of an inch. End of flashback. So I'll show you a little trick here. You really, you just wanna make sure that it goes all the way inside your connector and that there's copper around the entire connector, but there's not so much copper that it's extending past the protection plate. So if I put this in here and we kind of zoom in there, you can see that that's about as long as you would wanna get. 
Now you might say, well, Bruce, but how did you know? Well, I've been doing it a long time, so I just kind of have a good feel for it. Um, but that's, you know, this is probably closer to three eighths of an inch, but you want to be uh, maybe a quarter of an inch. Uh, now let's talk about the actual connector. So we got our wire ready, and we're gonna come right back to that. But let's talk about our actual connector itself. Uh, we're gonna pull this graphic up, and if you see on the NL4 connector, there's one positive, one negative, two positive, two negative. Well, that is written on your connector itself, okay? It's a little bit hard to see, and we probably can't focus the camera on it, but I can see right over here is my uh, two negative and there's my two positive. And then this is my two, my one negative, my one positive. So I'm gonna hold it in such a way that I remember how it's orientated. And for you guys, these are the two connectors that I'm dealing with. So this is my one side and that's gonna be my two side. And then my one, uh, my, let's see, one negative is the, the higher, the one up. All right, before I get too far down the road, I always wanna put my boot on first because if you forget that, you have to take the whole thing apart and try over again. I'm gonna go ahead and throw my strain relief in there as well. So that's just all ready to go whenever I'm done. And then uh, we're gonna just verify that we've got our negative up high, we got our positive down low, and I'm just gonna take these leads and I'm gonna slide them right into, you know, their connection. And then I'm gonna tighten down these screws. If you had a hard time getting them in there, don't be afraid to back that screw up a little bit so it slides right in there. And then I'm gonna tighten this all the way down. And then I want you to make sure you always do this. We're gonna do the little tug test. We're gonna pull on it to just to make sure that I can't pull those leads out. We don't want a bad connection. And the way to know if this is tight enough is you tighten it kind of all the way and then you give it just one more little boop, quarter turn. And that is gonna make sure that, yeah, it's definitely tight enough where your connector is in the way that it's supposed to be in. All right, so once you have your screws tightened and you've got your leads uh, in there, you've done the tug test, you're gonna take your strain relief. Um, there's these little notches on how it kind of hooks up there. So I've got that lined up. And then this can really go only go on one way. So you kind of twist until you feel when it starts to slide on. It's gonna slide on, then I'm gonna bring my boot up and I'm gonna start connecting my boot like that. And there, we did it. And now we've created an NL2 speak on cable, all right? If you don't know exactly what an NL2 cable is for, it's for the back of a amplifier, speaker amp, or it could go into the speaker itself. It's carrying power to go to the audio device. But because now we know how to do this, now we can apply the same knowledge to several different types of connectors. So here I've got PowerCon, well, we can do that. We've got our extension cord here. We've got a strip back, but now we're dealing with high voltage. We've got three connectors. We've got hot and our cold and our ground. So it's the same thing. You're looking for what's our hot, cold and ground uh, on our connector. We're figuring that out. We're stripping it back that, you know, kind of quarter inch that I was talking about. Then you're screwing your leads down. And then once you've got that figured out, you just put that on, put your strain relief up here. And once again, if I can get it all lined up, just like that. So now I've made a power con connector, okay? But then there's still more. What if you uh, have an extension cord that you wanna put a cord cap on? And that's what we call it in the industry is we call a cord cap, it's really just an Edison plug that uh, goes onto the end of an extension cord. So you'd have a damaged, you know, or you're trying to make up your own whip like we're doing here. And so we are doing the same thing. We're stripping it back. We've got our three leads, our hot, cold, and our ground. We're making sure that they're connected to the right lead and uh, on the plug. And then we're taking our, you know, our cord cap and we're gonna screw that all together. Yeah, you know, they're all gonna kind of tighten down a little bit differently. This one has this tightening stuff on the face here and the strain relief uh, up goes onto the back of here. 
There's another type of connector we run into uh, in the field that carries high voltage. It's called TrueCon. It's used a lot in lighting. It's all the exact same principle. You're thinking through the same thing. I'm about to do, I'm gonna, you know, get this strain relief down here. Okay, that's nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. That's nice and tight, our original cable. That's really the main thing you're looking for. You don't want a lead to pop out and then you don't have a good cable. So if you feel like, you know what, this is cool, I'm learning something, uh, this guy is not a complete moron, you're probably off on that, but you're at least learning something. You can hit subscribe, you can like, you can watch more videos. We've always got some content coming out. I'm just glad that you took some time to learn how to make PowerCon with us. TrueCon, NL4, PowerCon, EtherCon, CordCap, so many different types. Thanks guys.